Hey guys, welcome back to the next lecture. In this one, we are going to talk about syncope. And while syncope can be caused by a variety of problems, we're going to stick to cardiovascular causes in this lecture since we are in fact in cardio. All right, so let's dive in and let's get started. The most common form of syncope that you want to be aware of is reflex syncope. And this includes a few different kinds of reflex syncope. We have vasovagal, situational, and carotis, uh, carotid sinus syncope. Vasovagal syncope can be caused by either autonomic uh, cardio inhibition and or a vasodilatory response. So what does this mean? Well, it means that vasovagal, vasovagal syncope can involve the parasympathetic activation that results in slowing of the heart rate and decreasing cardiac output. That leads to a lack of perfusion of the brain that results in syncope and or it can result from the dilation of blood vessels from decreased sympathetic activation that leads to pooling of blood in the veins and it prevents adequate perfusion of the brain that of course also results in syncope. Now, there may not always be a stressful trigger, but this is the type of syncope that, that you think of when someone passes out after hearing bad news about a loved one or when they see a needle when they're getting a shot, things like that. Uh, events that are distressing to the individual should always be considered here. Now, prior to the syncopal episode, the patient may report lightheadedness and blurring of their vision, as well as sweating, nausea, uh, a sensation of being warm or cold, and then witnesses may note pallor of the patient. Now, this is a diagnosis of exclusion after you, you've uh, done workups for other causes. Now, it can be confirmed with an upright tilt table test. This is a test where the patient's strapped into a rotating table that moves them very slowly from supine to upright. And the signs of syncope like bradycardia or hypotension or even syncope itself are going to be noted. Now, you really only perform this test if you think vasovagal syncope is the cause, but you're still having some doubt. Um, it's not something that's routinely done. It's typically something that, you know, like I said, will rule out worst, um, worse reasons. And then if we come to the conclusion that there's nothing really going on, it would, we'd probably land on this. Okay. Um, so what I'm saying is don't, don't do the tilt table test first. Now, the next type of reflex syncope that we'll discuss is situational. Now, the cause here is the same as vasovagal with a combination of cardio inhibitory and or uh, vasodepressor responses leading to that syncope. Now, the difference here in the situational syncope is the event that precedes the syncope. This will usually involve some kind of straining, whether um, it's the patient initiating urination, defecation, uh, coughing, swallowing, something is there, okay? Something preceded the syncope. Now, they may have the same symptoms before the syncope as they did in vasovagal. So lightheadedness, pallor, sweating, nausea, those might all be the same. So if they just give you that, it doesn't really help us that much. But this too is a diagnosis of exclusion, right? So you're going to take a history, perform a physical, get an ECG, which is probably going to be the best next step anytime someone's fainted. Um, so you can see this looks a lot like vasovagal. However, there's a trigger, and that's going to be your main difference here. Now, the last of the reflex syncopes is carotid sinus syncope. And like the other types, this is the result of a cardio inhibitory and or vasodepressor response. But what kind of patients would get this condition? Well, you want to think of an elderly male patient who had prior neck surgery or even radiation to the neck or who has a known history of atherosclerosis. Now, if you're lucky, you'll get a very clear picture of clear history of some sort of neck manipulation or neck movement that directly preceded the syncopal event. Now, they, have, they may have been wearing a tight shirt collar or turned their head rapidly. There's something that they're going to tell you that has to do with, with the neck. Now, on physical exam, you'll find that you can replicate the lightheadedness or the syncope itself following the carotid massage. Now, aside from the patient, the patient uh, endorsing similar symptoms of syncope or lightheadedness with that carotid massage, you can also assess for, for a uh, carotid sinus hypersensitivity by checking some vital signs as you perform that massage. Now, if carotid massage results in a three-second or greater pause in heartbeat or a drop in systolic blood pressure of more than 50, it may indicate the carotid sinus is hypersensitive and may be responsible for the syncope. All right, let's move on to another cause, which is orthostatic hypotension. Now, the conditions associated with orthostatic hypotension are met when a patient moves from supine or sitting to a standing position and their systolic blood pressure drops by 20 or their diastolic blood pressure drops by 10. If this happens in 10 to 20 seconds, this is immediate orthostatic hypotension. 
However, if it happens after several minutes, it's known as delayed orthostatic hypotension. Obviously, the delayed type can lead to more severe issues if the patient, let's say, isn't near something they can grab onto, or you know they've been walking around, they're doing stuff, and then it happens. Okay, very, very uh, dangerous. More so if they have the delayed type. So. This is both how the condition is defined and also how you diagnose orthostatic hypotension. You measure the blood pressure in different positions. Now, causes of orthohypo include decreased intravascular volume, so think dehydration, very common cause. Uh, certain medications like antihypertensives or even opioids can be uh, uh, causative, as can alcohol use, uh, certain disease processes, and of course, old age. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about arrhythmias. Now, we go into detail on arrhythmias in a separate lecture, but for now, let's just discuss arrhythmias as they relate to syncope. So there are a few important uh, things to note. The first is that it can be a bradyarrhythmia or a tachyarrhythmia that's the cause of the syncopal episode. So the arrhythmia can cause the heart rate to slow down and become out of sync. That would lead to a decrease in cardiac output, or the arrhythmia can cause the heart to beat too fast and out of sync. So it can't fill properly, and it also results in a decrease in cardiac output. Either way, this can lead to syncope. Now, if the patient has syncope due to AV block, they're going to need a pacemaker. So cardiac pause is a term that refers to when a patient has AFib or atrial flutter that spontaneously terminates, and there is a delay before sinus rhythm starts again, that too can lead to syncope. It's called cardiac pause. Supraventricular tachyarrhythmias very rarely lead to syncope, and ventricular tachyarrhythmias are more commonly seen in patients who have conditions like coronary heart disease. Now, the big difference with syncope as a result of these arrhythmias when compared to the other causes is they can occur without any prior symptoms. There may be a feeling of palpitations, but often the patient just loses consciousness. Now, you're going to diagnose this with an ECG or with continuous telemetry, or at home with a 24-hour Holter monitor because it's possible that if you just do an EKG on the spot, it doesn't pick anything up. If that's the case, we will send them home so that we can get more information. Now, there's also structural problems that can prevent blood from reaching the brain, and so there's a list of conditions that you really want to keep in mind. Whether we're dealing with aortic stenosis, where the aortic valve is so stenotic that cardiac output is limited, or hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, where the left ventricular outflow tract obstruction is the cause, you can see with all of these conditions, there's some sort of structural issue that is simply obstructing blood flow, resulting in improper cerebral perfusion. Now, the big difference with syncope from these conditions versus a reflex syncope is that mortality is much higher for these patients. In fact, 30% of patients will die within the first year if they have syncope from a structural cardiopulmonary disease. That's really important to keep in mind. All right, lastly, we have cerebrovascular disease as the final cause of syncope. Now, it has to be a very specific location, namely the posterior circulation, in order to cause syncope because otherwise you will just see a focal neurologic deficit and not a syncopal episode. So what I'm trying to say here is this shouldn't really be at the top of your list when you're determining the cause of syncope because the brain has very, very redundant blood supply, and this specific condition needs to be met in order for syncope to occur. But it is possible that ischemia of the uh, vertebral basal artery could lead to syncope. Another rare possibility is a syndrome known as subclavian steel syndrome. And remember from your step one prep, this is where that stenotic subclavian artery is located proximal to the origin of the vertebral artery. The subclavian artery then steals blood from the vertebral basal artery circulation, to supply the arm during exertion, that results in vertebral basilar insufficiency, and we get our symptoms. So clearly, we've got a very specific set of criteria here. And the thing to look out for with respect to a vertebral basilar artery ischemia is the presence of any, uh, any uh, focal neurologic deficit, in which case you would work them up with an arteriogram and a carotid ultrasound. All right, let's do some content review questions. Here's your first question. I'll give you 20 seconds. You probably need more, so feel free to hit that pause button, figure this one out, and then come on back. Your correct answer here is B. Next question. I'll give you 20 seconds on the clock. If you need more, of course, hit that pause button.
correct answer here is B. And we have one more. I will give you 20 seconds on the clock and then give you the answer. The correct answer here is C. All right, that is the end of this lecture. I will see you guys on the next one. Thank you.